Hello, my name is Robert. I'm a software entrepreneur from Chicago. You can find me online at Robert Pieta. Uh, if you have any questions after the talk uh, or during the conference, just tweet at me. Uh, I started building apps uh, on the first iOS public SDK release. So this was pre-Swift, pre-Arc, pre-Blocks. It's been quite a ride since. And uh, I'm really excited today to talk about going from idea to pull request uh, in Swift and the Swift ecosystem. So a brief rundown of what we're gonna go through. First gonna talk a little bit about Swift and the different projects you can contribute to. Then we're gonna go through the journey from idea to pull request, going through my first uh, pull request, which is gonna be interesting. And then we'll talk about uh, how great places to get started this week and the different kind of resources and labs available for everyone to hopefully make some contributions. So to jump right in, uh, that was me. I know very little about compilers in the Swift language, and one of the things I was guilty of believing was if I can't contribute to the language, then I have nothing to contribute to Swift. That's uh, flat out wrong. And there's actually a lot of different Swift projects that are very diverse that you can contribute to, and this was uh, quite a surprise for me, and especially a couple years ago, there was a little less projects, but still more than just Swift the language. Um, so I have a, a fun thing I figured out while making this slide. If anyone can guess the XC test language, the second most used language in XC test, I'd be very surprised and impressed. Anyone? No, it's actually Python. Um, so that was a bit of a surprise. So if you know Python, you can also contribute to Swift. And one of the interesting things about each of these projects is they have very, very different build systems and configurations. Swift the language, of course, is a pretty complicated build system with developer tools to make it easier to build release and debug versions. But others, like Swift Core Libs Foundation, are contained almost entirely in Xcode. So you can just download the project, open up Xcode, run it, and test completely within Xcode, which makes contributing, especially for the first time, a lot easier. Uh, you can phone, uh, focus in more on what you want to contribute to instead of learning about the ecosystem as a whole. Quick note about Neo. Uh, Neo is the uh, server client uh, implementation, and it's a really, really cool Swift project that I'm kind of excited this week to see if I can contribute to. And in this talk, we're gonna be talking a lot about uh, Swift and Swift Core Labs Foundation, which is the two projects that I worked on at the beginning. I would highly recommend going through the Swift uh, GitHub list. There's a lot more than what was on screen and a lot more projects that you can contribute to, whatever that you kind of topic or area of computer science you find really interesting. It's uh, really great to see the ecosystem continue to grow and more projects are added uh, pretty much every month. Now with so many opportunities to start, I had to decide where to kind of focus my effort. I was pretty confused at the beginning, but I knew I was looking for performance. I wanted to make some performance improvements and specifically not focus on compilers, but focus on Swift, uh, the language. It's just something that I knew I'd be able to contribute something of value to, and I didn't uh, necessarily uh, want to spend a couple months deep in the uh, compiler implementation to figure out what was going on. And I wanted an Xcode build system. Uh, that was really important, since that's what I was really comfortable with. And as a first contribution, I just wanted to see if I could you know, contribute anything. Uh, and it turned out it worked. Before jumping into the story, if you ever get stuck, go to the forums.swift.org. It's a great place to learn about the types of contributions being made and what's being worked on in the ecosystem. If you have any questions, it's just a, a really good kind of repository of everything that's going on. Some projects have Slacks, Discords, and other methods of communication as well, uh, but those are more on a per project basis. So we're gonna jump right into the story. Uh, with the direction of performance and a selected project, in this case, Swift Core Labs Foundation, that fit kind of the experience I wanted uh, to contribute, I started on my journey towards a uh, pull request. And to kind of preface everything, when you contribute, you don't have to make a huge contribution. Swift and the Swift ecosystem prefers incremental development. You can contribute a very, very small number of lines of code that make a really high impact. And the first contribution that we'll see is actually completely contained within one function. So when I got started, of course, git clone onto my machine and seeing if I can build and run the project. Quick pro tip, depth one will not clone the whole repo, it will just 
clone the most recent version of every file. You probably do not want every revision of every file in the Swift repository. Uh, it'll take a very long time to download, and you can save yourself a lot of time by doing this. So with CoreLibs Foundation cloned, pulled up the target, Swift Foundation target, hit run, everything was great, we're moving good, pulled up the test Foundation target, completely failed. Uh, and if at the time I had actually read the readme, I would have known why this would happen because I didn't have the Swift toolchain installed. So the Swift toolchain is the latest version of Swift uh, and Swift compiler that you need to install when you're running the latest Swift repositories. We're gonna go through it very briefly, but not in the command line, because uh, I, in general, try not to use the command line when doing something for the first time. We're gonna go through the snapshot. So if you go to swift.org slash download, click Xcode, Linux, or whatever machine you're on, uh, it'll download an installer. It'll download the, everything as pre-built. Just walk through the installer steps. It's a um, little bit of a large file, but once you get it installed, you can open up Xcode preferences, and under components, you have toolchain options. And you can just select the latest one, and you'll be ready to build all of the latest projects and uh, start contributing. Don't forget to switch it back to your Xcode toolchain if you want your apps to build, and uh, might save you a lot of weird errors. So, of course, a pro tip, read the readme at least twice. Um, that would have saved me a lot of time especially since CoreLibs Foundation has another dependency of Swift uh, CoreLibs XC test, which you have to install in the same directory. And if you don't, you'll get some really interesting errors of duplicate symbols that are not really related to the core problem. Being able to build and run and test uh, the repository, we can fork. Uh, so you fork the project into your account and then clone it onto your machine we can make a branch. I called it performance, since that was what I was looking to do, but we'll rename the branch later. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you name it at the beginning. Uh, just make a branch so you actually know what your changes are versus, versus master. Then performance, art, or science, a little bit of both, I guess. Uh, I had a super, super secret technique for finding performance improvements in a new code base. Uh, we get a little bit of drum roll, regular expression for loop in code base. Uh, Swift CoreLibs Foundation had a small number of Swift files that form the foundation library. Uh, if you search for this uh, using the Xcode regular expression search, you'll get maybe about 300 results or so. And it's pretty easy to kind of just tap through them, see what comes up in your mind, see where you can try to find a performance improvement. A quick reference of how this is done in Xcode search, you can click text and get this nice drop down. Uh, I just showed this to a friend the other day who didn't know you can actually search by call hierarchy which will give you the backwards stack trace of where a function is being used. Also super convenient for kind of poking around the new code base. And of course you can filter by group. So in CoreLibs Foundation, the foundation group is where all the Swift files are held. And what I found after only a few, maybe 10 or 20 tabs, was this. This is the union function on index sets that has this wonderful comment. This algorithm is naive, but it works. As a contributor, this is pretty gold, you know. I was looking to improve performance, and this is perfect. So anytime you find fix me's, read me's comments, anything left by existing contributors, definitely give those a read. They really point you in the right direction and can give you some really easy ins into where you can contribute. So thank you to the contributor that left that there. That really made my life a lot easier. <laughs> so before moving on, uh, I'll leave this on screen for like 10 seconds just to let you guys think about what what an easy improvement to make here would be to improve the performance. Uh, relevant piece of information index set is a struct. Okay, we'll move on. Very brief moment to think about this. The first thing I thought about is removing the duplicate inserts. Index set is a struct, which is important because Swift has copy on write mechanics. So if we modify uh, other in this case, it'll uh, be duplicated and we can insert everything from self into other and this will perform faster since we're eliminated in one entire loop of inserts. So we're great, right? We can just pull across this and everyone's good to go. <laughs> Not quite. We need to take a step back and think a little bit about 
the different edge cases or different kind of consequences of making a change in this case uh, because it's a uh, member function self could be larger than other or vice versa. So this is not necessarily the most performant way of doing this. It is in some cases, but not all of them. So we can make a slightly better solution by saying which set is larger and then using that one to insert the smaller one into. And this will complete our, our kind of first pass at a performance improvement for union. And then we test locally, always test locally. Swift Core Labs Foundation is especially a cross-platform uh, project and endeavor. So even if it tests pass locally, it doesn't mean they'll pass uh, uh, in the cloud. But this is a really great way to make sure that you actually caught everything Swift and their projects are pretty complicated. So even a small change, even one line change, you've all seen the memes of, uh, it's just a one line change, just push it, it'll be fine. And then 64 comments on GitHub later. <laughs> Turns out it's not. Uh, so <laughs> make sure to test. And then if you can, add tests if they're not there. And take a brief moment to look at the test cases for whatever you're contributing to, making sure that they're comprehensive. Any change that you make might actually add more relevant tests. It really makes the whole ecosystem a lot easier, especially for new contributors. It was really great to have a really comprehensive test suite uh, that I can contribute to and then run and not have too much pressure that I'm going to break Swift completely. So what we're going to do real quick is hop to a playground. Oh, that's way too small. Okay, so a friend showed me uh, Ada Swift last night, which is a great Swift profiling tool, but I couldn't get it to, to build in uh, Xcode, the latest versions of Xcode, and so instead I made a quick playground um, since we're making performance improvements, we want to actually make sure we're improving performance instead of degrading performance. So I made a really quick playground that has some basic measuring. We have the three implementations that we showed, the original slow one, the better one, and the speedy new implementation. Uh, I didn't want to overwrite the structs or anything, so I just use emojis as operators. Uh, it makes everything print out really nice. And here at the bottom, We'll just generate 100 comparisons between index sets. The index sets are just random numbers and random amounts because we want to test when the different cases may be really outweighed sets, sets that are kind of balanced. And we'll run the tests and print the results, and we'll see what we get. And hopefully this will actually improve performance. That would be good. Turns out that it does. We've done a pretty, pretty meaningful improvement uh, by leveraging copying instead of inserting into, into existing sets. And now that we're confident that we've actually made a meaningful impact, we can start the PR process and uh, explain our work to the contributors. So let's switch back. So before moving on too far, we want to do a quick pass to make sure that our variables are named right, that we added some comments. So we'll do that real quick. We'll make it a little, little cleaner and, of course, add some nice comments to make sure someone else looking at this code in the future is going to know what's going on and we'll return the favor to the original contributor that left that really nice comment and leave some really nice comments for folks in the future. Quick pro tip, uh, make sure to rebase before pushing because you might uh, not have all the test cases. Uh, so I definitely messed this up when I was contributing for the first time. Uh, it will save you a little small amount of, of uh, heart attack when you get that email that uh, your contribution made the build fail. So of course, we gotta rename our branch from performance to something more interesting. I renamed it to index at union performance enhancement and made a very quick, uh, very short and succinct PR in set or improved performance of Indexet Union, and exactly what we did, we removed the double insert and leveraged Swift struct copy. Another pro tip that a friend of mine told me, just look at other contributors' PRs in a similar space, see how they formatted their titles and descriptions and kind of model, model yours off that. Uh, you probably don't need to write a five paragraph essay, um, which is definitely what I wanted to do. I wanted to explain every little detail of the contribution but it's really not necessary. and leads straight into the next tip, 
make sure it's clear and succinct. There's 25,000 open and closed pull requests on Swift. It's a lot of emails and a lot of reading. Uh, so the more you can focus in on exactly what your change is doing, the easier and faster your change can get reviewed. A few more pro tips here. Make sure to squash your commits. Uh, I definitely iterated a little bit on this change when I was developing for the first time. And the reviewer doesn't need the past two, you know, week of, of minor changes that I made. You just need the diff between master and the contribution. And then I sent it to a friend uh, just to do a quick mini review, make sure I didn't uh, mess up anything silly, make sure everything's named correctly or named adequately, uh, spelled correctly is a big one. And then I started this button for a while because it was kind of late and uh, put a little bit too much pressure on myself that didn't really exist because everyone's really nice in the Swift community, so no one's gonna like look at your pull request and be like, oh yeah, this, no way. Um, but finally, clicked it and then went to sleep. Uh, and it turns out, uh, I got really lucky for the first contribution. It was merged the next day. Um, there in the morning, someone commented to have the Swift bot run the tests, tests passed, and it was merged. One thing I learned was to not panic about the comments. They're actually really, really helpful on a different contribution that I made uh, I learned that NS mutable set on Darwin doesn't have IVARs, which my contribution relied on, and so it would not actually work on Darwin, which is Mac, uh, which was really interesting and something I had no idea about, and so it changed a little bit of how the contribution was structured to make sure that we can actually merge it into the project. The reviewers are really there to help you and kind of point out different areas of the system that uh, you might not know about projects are all really complicated, especially cross-platform endeavors, to get Swift building on all the platforms it supports. And sometimes reviewers will ask for small changes. Um, this definitely happened on uh, other commits of mine. Usually just make them. Every reviewer will see the code base slightly differently. They'll review a slightly different subset of pull requests, and they're always the ones that will know what uh, what the best changes are to make sure that your, your contribution makes sense within the whole code base. You can courtesy ping after about, if like, no one's reviewed your change after about a week or so. Uh, I did not do this because I was way too scared to like bother anybody. Um, but the reviewers will actually tell you that GitHub will send the initial email when you make the pull request and then that's it, there's no more follow up. So if your change isn't looked at, it's not because you know, it's, it's not good or something. It's probably just because it was missed in a flood of emails of contributions. So a quick courtesy ping uh, after a week or so would, would go a long way. And for the contribution we just saw, this actually was commented after it was merged, where this code is probably shared with the overlay stuff in the Swift project too. And of course, the natural reaction, well, what's the overlay stuff? <laughs> Turns out that uh, Swift Globes Foundation is actually uh, duplicated or, or a large part of the Swift project. So I was able to take this contribution and move it over to Swift as well and go through the whole process of basically what we saw here, downloading Swift, cloning, working, getting it to build and compile, reading the readme at least twice, very important for Swift itself because the build process is much more complicated than hitting run in Xcode. And reviewing, and then of course submitting the pull request at the end. And that's it, that was my journey from idea to pull request. It was uh, a lot of fun, and I've continued to do uh, contributions since. We'll talk a little bit about where to start, especially since we're here this week. So the first place, of course, are bugs. There are a lot of open tasks uh, in all the Swift projects, and a great place to find them is bugs.swift.org slash issues. For the Swift and Swift for TensorFlow projects, there's actually a label called starter bug that the core team assigns to bugs that are perfect for new contributors to kind of get their feet wet. And you can find them. If we go to this URL, we'll find this page. We just have to hit more and search for label. And this will bring down the label selector. And we can search for starter bug. Here's an example of an open bug. At the time when I was making the slide, I don't know if it's still open. But it presents uh, a great example of what starter bugs are like. It's very well defined. We know exactly what we need to do here. Uh, there's the package model.sources struct should be using the directory on disk. And it looks like on Linux it is not. And so if we 
clone the Swift project, go to this implementation, find the root property. That's exactly what we're going to be operating. And then we can make the contribution, add the test necessary to make sure it pass, and then submit it back to the repository. I highly recommend checking out the, the Swift bugs this week, especially during some of the labs, uh, so you can get some help if you get stuck. For Swift Core Labs Foundation, the goal of the project is to take the foundation framework and make it cross-platform. So there is a list of all the classes within the foundation framework and whether or not they are implemented. So if you are really excited about NS Coder, for example, this would be a great place to make some contributions and fill out the implementation. As mentioned earlier, some projects have Slacks and Discords. This is Swift Package Manager. If you have any questions about what's going on in Swift Package Manager and want to know what to contribute, the Slack would be a great place to start and get immersed in what's going on there. Second, documentation. Document cha documentation changes are uh, also great for new contributors. A lot of the top contributors of the existing repositories start out by making documentation changes. I know the ones for Swift Core Libs Foundation did. Uh, that's why I included this in the slides, because uh, that's where they said they got started. Triaging bugs, especially in the bug list that we just saw, uh, is a lot of work. There are a lot of folks submitting bugs to the Swift or bugs.swift.org, and it's important that each of them have small reproducible examples, that there's no duplicates. You can really help the ecosystem by helping triage bugs. We mentioned tests earlier. Tests help new contributors just feel confident that they didn't break something. It's a really well-defined scope and adds immediate value. So if you have a few moments, consider adding some test cases to something that you're very familiar with. And of course, areas of passion for me. I was really interested in performance. I thought I'd learn a lot by poking around the Swift repository and seeing what was there, and I definitely did. So if there's anything that you're particularly interested in that might be relevant to the Swift projects across the Swift ecosystem from asynchronous operations and dispatch or testing and XC test, definitely consider uh, jumping into that repo this week because there are a lot of events and folks from the core teams here, these are two really quick ones uh, that you can consider attending. Tomorrow there's a Swift in the Swift compiler They'll walk through a lot more about how to get Swift built on your machine and compiling to, and com, sorry, contributing to the main Swift project. Uh, do a much better job of explaining the build process than I can in half an hour in case you get stuck since it gets a little bit complicated. And of course on Friday, uh, there's TriSwift, which is a community event focused on helping folks contribute to Swift and Swift ecosystem. I'll be there as a mentor as will a lot of other core contributors to the Swift projects. So consider coming by, asking any questions. And of course, if you see me during the week, feel free to say hello and ask any questions you have. I highly recommend contributing to Swift as something to do for fun. It was really, really kind of engaging. And I definitely, definitely recommend it. It all started because a friend of mine was like, you should do it. And a lot of the misconceptions I had were kind of fixed by this friend being like, actually, no, you don't need to be a compiler engineer, and no, you don't need to write 300 lines of code before you make a pull request. So definitely, this week, if you're here, consider giving it a go. And that's it. Test, test. Okay, oh. we're gonna have a quick Q&A session. So if anyone has a question, feel free to raise your hand and I'll come to you. And uh, we just wanna make sure we speak the questions into the mic, that way everyone's able to hear it. So uh, anyone have any questions, just raise your hand. They're all professionals. There, there you go, I see a couple, all right. Hi, so um, that regex that you used to, uh, that was looking for loops, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any other like insights to common performance, um, I guess, hotspots? Um, I know loops is kind of an obvious one, but um, anything like maybe the functional like mapping and, and whatnot? Yeah, that's a really great question uh, for a 
first contribution, I knew I needed like one or two examples to get started. So loops was the easiest one. Um, somewhere in the Swift code base, there must be a performance improvement for, for based on a loop. Uh, that was a high likely, likely chance. The other ones get more interesting. I've done a little bit of work with instruments and tracking chip events. So you can track like the L2 cache events. Those are a really great way also to find improvements. I wrote a blog post about that um, if you want to go check it out because performance is really specific to the machine and what you're doing. Even in this index at union example, the performance characteristics depend completely on the number of ranges in each index set. If you have one in each one, I mean, the change is not going to do very much, right? Because you have very little to, to work with. But if you have a thousand in one in the right order between self and other, I mean, the change is, you know, a hundred times faster. So there's no real like one answer to that. It's very, very specific on what you're working on, the specific characteristics of what you're working on, and any tooling that is related to that. So I would use instruments mostly to, to see if you can find anything. And inside the code base, especially for something like Swift, any I.O. network or loops are great places to start. Um, there is very, at least in Core Loops Foundation, you're mostly building the backbone for all that, so it's not doing very much I.O. in itself where it's leveraging you know, existing classes. Um, but the implementation for the I.O. would be a really interesting place to start uh, to look for this stuff like that. Someone had their hand up Someone had a question over here. Oh, who's there? And we'll get you next. So, like, what qualifies who are the people in charge of actually approving all these merge requests, or pull requests, sorry? Yeah, that's a great, another great question. Every project has a core set of contributors that are kind of all over the world, and a lot of them are actually here. So this is gonna be the best time to meet uh, some of them since they're not all based in, in you know, the Bay Area. And when you make a pull request, at some point in the future, someone will review it, and they will be part of the core team. They'll have access to, to be able to review your pull request and merge it. And it's very dependent on each project. You can actually apply to be a core contributor if you go to the swift.org um, contributing guidelines. I think it's something like send five non-trivial pull requests that were merged without comments, and then you can become a core contributor and become one of the folks responsible for, for reviewing some of these pull requests if you get approved. It's a very community um, kind of focused uh, endeavor, which is really nice. Um, you get to meet a lot of really interesting people and kind of learn a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise, uh, especially contributing to Swift projects that are very diverse, like Core Loops Foundation. My question was already answered. Oh, awesome. All right. Hey, you said that the pull request you did a day later it got merged, but then after that they wanted you to make more changes regarding the overlay. So how long was it between that back and forth did your change actually get merged? So that change was merged into the Core Loops Foundation project and the comment was about the main Swift project. So it took a couple weeks after that to make the change for the separate Swift project, but once it was merged, that was it. It only took a day to go into the, the main project that I commented on. But that didn't happen like all the time. Sometimes it was a week, especially around WWDC. Uh, it might take a longer time to, to get reviewed since everyone is really busy flying to San Francisco and, and preparing for this year's events. Uh, so it kind of depends on, on when you make the contribution, but almost always it'll eventually get reviewed and commented on. Do we have the mic? I don't even know if this is like a good question to ask. I just had a thought, like Apple is basing all their products off this new Swift language and they just let the community run wild with it. I mean, does, does Apple ever say, intervene or say no, can you guys like go this way or? There, there are a little more controls than that, I think. Uh, okay. For the main Swift project, uh, there's a whole Swift evolution process where you can create proposals, the community will comment on, the core contributors at Apple behind Swift will, will, will provide their thoughts. It, on forums.swift.org, you can go to the Swift Evolutions forum or thread and see everything that's been proposed. 
and that's where a lot of the decisions for the Swift language are made. It's not quite a wild, wild west. I think Apple does a really great job of allowing contributions from all over the world, but also making sure that it's being built incrementally in a very stable fashion. You, you definitely don't want a language that you rely on to be kind of a, a gunslinging Rambo. That would not, not really be great. So with uh, all the things that were announced yesterday, you know, we saw that Swift is becoming, or dare I say Swift, but Swift UI. I don't know if this is gonna be an offshoot or, or whatnot, but how, how, what was your first reaction to some of the things you saw as far as Swift becoming more declarative? Yeah, that's another great question. I think, for me, I'm really excited to see it continue to make cross-platform a really big focus. Declarative UI is a really important step, I think, towards a cross-platform environment. It makes it really easy to create a UI specification that's not tied to a specific platform, and also helps simplify a lot of code. So I really enjoyed a lot of the advancements they've been making in Swift. I think that's a large part due to the community engagement they have with the Swift Evolution proposals. You can see proposals from all over the world from high school students to you know, folks that have been in the industry for 40 years. Uh, it's, I think that kind of collaboration is really awesome and translates every year when they announce the new Swift features. Um, that's why a lot of them are, are very focused on the main objectives of Swift. I hope that answers the question. Hi, great talk. Um, what was the most difficult or uh, task you've had to date, or the one that gave you the greatest learning? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't quite hear. So out of all the work you've done, or all the contribu contributions you've made, which is the one that's given you the greatest joy or the greatest learning? Another good question. For me, a lot of the barrier was like internal. So getting over the first one and getting that merged was definitely the biggest mark of like, uh, it's actually possible to do this. Um, even though I had, a lot of, I had a lot of Swift experience and I was very comfortable um, developing in Xcode and Swift, it was still a little bit daunting to contribute to a very public project. Like everyone can go find this pull request online. It's not a secret. Uh, so getting over that I think was definitely one, one big step forward. And there was another, another contribution um, that I made around the, actually the one with the comments uh, around copying of NS mutable sets. I really enjoyed that one because the thread ended up being like 30 comments long of some very interesting nuances of Darwin and the implementation that I had no idea about, but it was really awesome to learn about. I would not have run into that almost anywhere else. So I really enjoyed the ability to kind of pick up these random pieces of interesting inf implementation information that I really wouldn't run into anywhere else. Any more questions? Looks like we're good. Just raise your hand. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. Thank you so Everyone, much, give everyone. Robert a hand. Thank you.